Good afternoon and welcome uh, to episode eight of Three Feet from Gold. Uh, we're going to be talking about masterminds based on chapter 10 of the book, Three Feet from Gold. My name is Jeremy Murphy. I'm a positivity health and running coach in Lincoln, Nebraska, also creator of the Positivity Patrol. And I'm joined by my friend Ha Tran. Hello, this is Ha. I'm a motivational speaker, a published author, and a navigational coach. And my office located in Beverly, Massachusetts. Welcome. Thank you. And before we uh, proceed with the content of the show, we did get consent from the Napoleon Hill Foundation uh, to produce this series and to use the title Three Feet from Gold. But they asked us to read a notice to tell you a little bit about the foundation so that others could learn about them. Um, but here's the notice they asked us to read. Three Feet from Gold is used with the consent of the Napoleon Hill Foundation. However, the foundation has no control over and does not endorse the Blab.im platform or content. To learn more about the Napoleon Hill Foundation, go to naphill.org. And they're doing wonderful work around the world. They've helped thousands or millions of people over the years. And uh, just if you haven't checked out the foundation's website and their uh, books, please, please do that. It's uh, very helpful that people uh, are positive and have a positive mindset. And they're very helpful in that respect, too. Okay. Uh, now, you know, today we are in... Um that is uh, the episode number eight in chapter right. 10. And the title of chapter is Mastermind. I love that. So, <laughs> yes. So, um, Jeremy, um, tell me what on your mind when you're talking, when you heard people talking about Matt, uh, Mastermind and especially about this book. Um, you know that this is the very concept of the uh, Think and Grow Rich. Um, it is. Uh, the mastermind, and here we also have a chapter called Mastermind as well. I, I think, you know, before I read Th Think and Grow Rich, I had no idea what mastermind meant. I, I just, if people would use that word and I, I just couldn't understand it. But after reading Think and Grow Rich and thinking about it a little bit, I, I realized it was, you know, a more powerful concept. It, it really creates a, uh, allows a small group of people to create a brain trust um, of support and uh, encouragement for each other, uh, problem solving, things of that nature, uh, to help everyone achieve their goals and maybe making sure that it's a small enough group that, you know, it doesn't become unwieldy if the group is too large. You know, the concept of mastermind is um, get to, to create synergy. Yeah, you know, it's a simple math. You one plus one equal to two, but when you come into the mastermind, uh, one plus one equal to nine or 12. Because see, yes. the, um, the one of idea um, that, that they communicate through, through in the group at the mastermind, it will sparkle to more of the idea. Right. Yes, it, it creates a powerful synergy and uh, allows for exponential growth among the, all the members of the group, not just uh, the uh, administrator or leader of the group, but for everyone to rise together. That's correct, because, you know, the, the concept of the mastermind in this book on thinking grow rich, that the, the network and then they share the idea and they help each other to reach their peak performance. Right. Right. Peak, peak performance partners for each other. That, that's a great way to put it. And I, if that's not what the group is, then it, it's not a mastermind, in my opinion. Do you agree? Yes, uh, no, I agree uh, totally. Um, you know, and then when um, people are talking about um, the mastermind, uh, they have an entire different concept about mastermind. But mastermind group is, um, like you said, a small group, four or five people. Uh, because uh, first of all, we're talking about the time frame and we're talking about the concept. Um, you know, because not everybody have two, three hours just to sit down and, and talk for hours. True. You know, usually, um, you know, within an hour or so that the mastermind will make more effective because you don't want to, to wear people out, you know, to be so tired or uh, they have to tending something and because they have to sit there, they might wandering somewhere True. elsewhere. That happens. Happens to all yeah. of us, unfortunately. But 
Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, I, we were talking about the mastermind uh, in the three feet from go and and the thing and grow rich. Um, you know, for for me, the idea of mastermind is um, uh, the the people that um, you know when <laughs> it it would be good if you can sit a a, um, a round a round table at the coffee shop mm -hmm. when you can drinking the coffee and talking uh, about uh, you know some idea some challenge and someone offer you some solutions or some suggested solutions um, but you know today a technology make it um, feasible for the people to have the mastermind uh, online um, uh, or even have online and have uh, in person you know if you have a the place that you can uh, have the people uh, come together and then they will satellite somebody in and uh, to talking about uh, to me it's more effective when um, your presence no notice you know because there's sometimes uh, i i don't like the, the idea of um uh over the phone but you know it's exactly. also working all day there is no technology no um video so people don't see each other those people are so serious in the idea of to help each other and to lift each other up you're right. I, I think it's important to note, though, that a lot of people learn by audio uh, is their primary way of learning. And so for those type of people, the masterminds, maybe by virtual connections might work, e even if there's a whether there's a video component or not, maybe it wouldn't be available to everyone. But I, at least with with hearing each other's voices, I, I think you do get a great deal of what that person's bringing to the table. But you're, you're right. If you can see them. You just you're going to have a deeper understanding. It'll be more a po powerful experience, really. Now, um, I, I, when I don't know if you have the thing at Grow Rich in your hand or the um, uh, three feet from goal, you will see that uh, the um, <laughs> the people in the mastermind group, and we're talking about the group of four or five people. Uh, do you know why? Group is so small because you know when people are talking about master micro, they think that uh, they will bring everybody come into the the, the car or the meeting and they call master my group. Um, uh, what do you see the differences in the the master my uh, the the um, in in the people my and in the the way that the Napoleon Hill intended to have. Yeah, I think Napoleon Hill's uh, sense of a mastermind was that there might be more members. Um, that's my interpretation. I, I don't remember if that's borne out in the book or not. Um, hold on a moment. I'm sorry. And I think with, with Think uh, and Grow Rich, like I was saying, it, it was it seemed to be a larger group as far as numbers with um, Three Feet from Gold. It, it did seem to be a smaller, more intimate group. You maybe get to know the members uh, better, <clears throat> but it's interesting just to see the variance in uh, how many people are um, in the group. But but to have each person bring something different and unique to the table, so that it's an enriching experience to everyone. If that doesn't happen, then I, it just it, it's not going to function well as a mastermind. I, I agree totally because every member of the mastermind group have to bring their own expertise, their own specialized to come uh, into the group. And um, b b because see, that is, um, you know, and you, you complete the group by different people with a different um, uh, skill set in order to help Good. each other yes. uh, out. Well put. Yeah. yeah. And, so, and um, those, those skill sets reinforce and support each other and help take us to different planes of existence. And if we can get to that higher plane, uh, that that's powerful because then then you can see higher and higher and higher aspirational goals or points that we can reach for uh, together. Not so much separately, but together we can accomplish so much more. And, and that's why the mastermind is such a beautiful um group that that's powerful for all the members at least it's intended to be and you know that the respect factor 
and uh, need to be uh, mentioned in the group too. Because Why? see, when, um, okay, I, I don't know, and I, I'd love to be a fly on the wall of those mastermind uh, that is um, administered by uh, Napoleon Hills and uh, by Jonathan. But um, do you know when when people come in that is just like so exclusive? You know when the, the five people they interest each other about their ideas and um, their uh, you know I mean it, it you know they they go beyond friendship because they are in the the considered collaborations among the the the, the cream of the um, uh, what they call the uh, the, the top of the business yeah right. Uh, and, and, you know, for, for instance, now, if I understand it all, and I do have my own mastermind group, and my mastermind group is, um, you know, four or five people, and you will, you, you know, every week we will um, uh, have one person to be a facilitator. And let's say if Good. I'm uh, the faci uh, facilitator, and then I have you, I have Chuck, and uh, I have the evangelist, um, uh, Tony or, or Sean in it. And, you know, and then we said, okay, uh, Jeremy, go first. And what is your, what is your win? You share with your win and we will together, we'll celebrate with you. And then, you know, the next thing you issue is you will say, um, what is, what challenged you? And then the people in the member of, of the, the group will give you suggested solutions because who own their own experience. They said, you know, I have the situation like that and let me tell you how I handle it. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you any Joe Schmo, what is your thing is not, you know, not relevant to me, but this is, they are the people very much equivalent equally into the society and into the business background. Yes. And they, then I said, okay, yeah. Jeremy, tell us what is your challenge and how can we help you? And then you start to say, and then somebody, you know, and the five people uh, in the group, that mean, including you, then the four other people will give you their tech. And, uh, you know about how they going to say uh, they give you some suggestions solutions and then and at the end you will say uh, okay you know I, I listen to you guys carefully and I think Chuck idea is something that I, I want to implement it because it you know it, it right now at this moment it's the most making sense to me Okay, so, and again, you said, okay, then I'm going to do this. And then you might have a, a another conversation. You will connect with Chuck at one point, you know, and then you said, okay, then, then he can mentoring you. Mm -hmm. If you buy into his idea, he can mentoring you in order to, to help you to overcome that. Right. And then you will make a certain thing, a promise that, okay, that's what you're going to do. And the group will hold you accountable for that. You know, I, I love how it, it allows you to walk away with not just one golden nugget, but with maybe several. Maybe, like you said, if it's a group of five, you, you walk away with five pieces of wisdom that you, you can't find on the streets because you don't, like you said, Ha, you don't have people that, with the relevant knowledge and experience and uh, problem solving ability that the people that are in the mastermind are. I mean, there's a powerful dynamic if, if these are successful people that are, you know, we all have our struggles, but, but successful people help other people become successful. And, and that's why this works so well. If it's set up well and structured, like, uh, like you're talking about with the, you know, with the group that you uh, maintain and run. Yeah. And, and trust and respect is, is a very, very important because see, if you have a new idea and you know that, and you trust it, that your idea will be protected, you, you know, somebody will not steal your idea and go out to do uh, something else. You know, True. see, that's why the, the, I love you using the word dynamic because the, the master, my group, it have to be such as, you know, and really dynamic does. of the people who very actively and who will um, will stand on their uh, their decision and they, they will share with you. They're not just saying to you that you have to do that, but they just say, okay, I have gone through that and that's what I have done to solve it. And, you know, you can listen to other people and you will resonate with someone. And True. when you resonate with them and then you will implement what they just uh, mentioned it, 
but the most important thing is, um, Jeremy, that the cyber, you need to bring that people into your world and then to make the connection because they, he or she will be your accountability partner for you to go on this journey. Yeah, I, I'm glad you brought up the the issue of an accountability partner because if we sometimes if we procrastinate on things and if we don't have someone we're checking in with like that, uh, it just it's so easy to just let let all these projects sit and then we wonder why we're not being successful. Well, it's because we're we don't have a system set up that's strong enough, dynamic enough, and powerful enough to to really light a fire under us and to help us achieve our goals and dreams together. That, that's correct. And Jeremy, just assuming that you are a member of that and you share your win and you share your challenge and people give you your, all their suggested and recommend idea, and then you make a promise, you committed to do something like that. Will you show up the next week without doing a thing? No, you show <laughs> up with not. all the things ready to say, okay, you know, through your guide, you know, your share, I have done this and done that, and you will share that your result with them. Right. And, see? and that's that's where it becomes meaningful, where people see, oh, well, now that I have said that I'm going to do this, I, I better go do it because I don't want to show up at the mastermind the next week and say, oh, well, I, I didn't really do anything. I'm going to try to do the same thing again. I mean, that that's not the point no. is that you take the incremental steps like you're talking about. You accomplish A, then B, then C, then D and go through the alphabet and then, you know, start over again. <laughs> yes. And so uh, now they, they, um, the Chuck mentioned that they, they meet um, maybe uh, one or twice a month or a, a few times a year. But, you know, for me, a mastermind group, that the one that I so love it, that, that you do the weekly. Because, you know, four or five people, you share time together and you have each other have 10 minutes, you know, to make your case. And then, you know, and then have somebody, you know, the other people come together and, uh, you know, they will give you your point, maybe take you take them about four or five minutes. But again, you want to go uh, around. We don't want to leave anybody behind because the purpose of that, we come in there, we will share, we will have our equal say about a uh, thing going around. Right. And that's that's important. You want to each person should be heard and each person has their own wisdom, experience and knowledge that should be shared with the group because it, it can it can help anyone in the group. And we don't even know which one until the other members hear what that person has to say. Thank you for mentioning that, because that's why the master my group, you don't come as your convenience. True. That is your commitment. Right. You show Stronger. up every day on time or early because you need to be there because you never know who the one of the member might need your expertise. True. You, you know, and that is a commitment. It is not just something that you stroll in without uh, prepare, without do the work and without ready to share, without ready to learn. Yeah, you do have to be ready to learn it. If, we, if we're if we not going to have that attitude about it, we're not going to soak up anything. And, and it's just a waste of time, you know, that we, we have to be willing to learn, open to learning and, and to accept that we're lifelong learners. We need to learn something every day. And that's why the mastermind is so powerful, because even after we think we've completed our education, even if we have postgraduate uh, experience and education, you know, that doesn't mean much in the long run because you, you learn things after that sometimes that are that are much more important than what you learned in school. And what you said is, is very, very true because, you know, your formal education, I don't discard the formal education, but you're talking about on-hand experience. Right. You know, those people on the, the PhD yeah. in life, you know, they right. learn to um, try and error and through their own experience. That is so invaluable because you know, you need to see that, you need to recognize that because if you don't, mastermind is not for you. True. That's true. And you have to make sure the members uh, uh, are in alignment with each other somehow, too. Don't don't we in a mastermind? Oh, yes. I mean, <clears throat> you know, I am not going to embarrass anybody in front of the group. I If I initiate the group and I will have that conversation with that member. And then, you know, the first uh, I might have the conversation and the second time it's uh, maybe we have to remove he or she because uh, we don't want anybody, you know, 
I don't mind to carry you, but you need to lift up your feet because True. you just cannot drag your feet because you put more weight for me to carry you. Yeah, great point. Yeah, we, we can't we can't stay where we are or we don't grow. And if we don't grow, we, we're just going to be stuck where we are. That that's correct. So, okay, let 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 talking about the mastermind in this book, and we're talking about the mastermind group um, and the lesson that the, they they share. Um, you know that when um, Jonathan walked Craig into the room, and he said, he clearly said that Craig doing to the nature of our meeting, our business, you cannot stay. However. I will introduce you to uh, our members and each one of them will share with you uh, their experience, their golden nuggets, and then you have to go. And, and that, that's interesting you bring that up because I, that sneak peek into the mastermind gives you a glimpse that can be useful enough to determine if that mastermind is for you or not. Um, but but you're right. I mean, there there has to be the trust that you talked about has to be preserved. And in order to do that, you've got to keep the mastermind uh, uh, matters confidential so that it's just among the members and it's not, you know, getting out in the general public. It's so important, you know, because if I don't trust my idea will be protected, True. will be respected, no way I will share with you. And then if the mastermind group make me feel lesser than who I am, then that group is not for me true you know and then if you go into the master my group and you don't learn anything you don't pick anything that is not the right group for you you have to move on to find something else that will true. more that in your level more uh, suiting you better right and we, and we can now grow masterminds in some cases i think if we reach points where we're not benefiting anything and, uh, you know, it just, we don't seem to be in alignment in the members or the administrator is not uh, really putting in the effort to hold the group together as a cohesive group, you know, that then I think sometimes we need to walk away and, and find a mastermind that fits where we are in life. Our, our, our growth can take us outside the uh, scope of a, you know, mastermind A and maybe put us in mastermind B group uh, might be a better fit for us. You, you brought a, a, a great point. And yeah, I mean, if you stop growing and then, you know, you grow out of that group and then you have to move on. True. But let me bring a, a, your attention to the mastermind group of Napoleon Hills and um, the one Jonathan have, because those people are so engaging, so commitment, uh, so committed to their personal growth. And those people are not just standing there and let them become obsolete they right. continue to move on they continue to grow and they continue to um to be better and you know and then if a group have the same commitment everybody want to be better everybody invested in themselves um then everybody will have a fresh uh, idea and they, they continue to grow on and yes, they, they, they can stay for years together that's true. And it's interesting to see in a lot of cases, they, they do stay together for years because they, um, they recognize they do resonate with each other. They're in alignment. There's personal growth happening for each of the members. Um, but, but the thing I would emphasize that relates to what you talked about, Ha, is uh, the members have to be active. Everybody's got to be active. They can't, you know, you can't have people uh, slacking a mastermind group or uh, it, you're just going to have giant holes in the boat and the boat will sink. The group won't uh, last. You see, and that 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 that's that exactly uh, right. And then you you know, and and again, um, you, you, I I think that let's say if you start the mastermind group, you need to have um, the rule and regulations uh, out because True. you know easier when you talk at the beginning of. The, the, the starting the group because it becomes something that everybody uh, ha have to accept and agree to, not that because later on you said that you must do this and you must do that. True. You, you know, and, and I learned to say the word, a um, boundary. 
boundary. Uh, boundaries? Boundaries, yes. Uh -huh. You have to set your boundary because uh, what is okay, what is not okay. And, you know, and then be because it is very, very, very important. And then the integrity that, you know, have to be intact because you cannot be generous to somebody and then resent them at a later time when, uh, in fact, that you feel like you pour into them and they have they do nothing in reciprocal um, in return. Sure, yeah, that it, it's going to be a two-way street, and, and if it's not uh, mutual uh, in support and encouragement for each other, it just it's not going to work. Yeah, and then if you are the person initiate the group, you have to take that top. Um, uh, a role that you will have to talk to the member that lot less uh, active. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I mean, you don't embarrass them in front of everybody else, but you sure. must have the, the private conversation. Right. And then the first time that you're talking about that, the second time, you should let that person go because he or mm -hmm. she might not want to be there. Let he or she go elsewhere where they, they be happier. That's a good point. I, it, like, like we said, they're, um, they're just the personal dynamics, interpersonal relationships vary. Certain people resonate and connect and align with each other better than others. And we just have to be open enough to recognize that and um, really figure out which mastermind groups might be a good fit for us and, and which ones might not. And, and like you said, if, if the person doesn't fit in the group, then, then the group has to adjust somehow. Yes. And, um, you know, and then let's let go back to the book. Um, uh, as I mentioned uh, to you, and when, in the book, they're talking about Dave Lindiger, uh, who is um, the, the CEO of um, of the Remax uh, book that um, uh, Greg did mention that, um, you know, he have he went through the tough time when the um, uh, the, the, the housing market that um, burst the bubble and you know and then the, the one is uh, keep him moving on that he knowing that um, you know because he believed in his ability and he believed that how he created the job for everybody else and the thing is he string one day at a time together and then to get to the day that um, Remax uh, become one of the most successful uh, real estate company in the in the United States. And it's amazing to me that I, I was able to relate to the, um, you know, the way that he was fighting off creditors, you know, saying, I don't have that money to, uh, to give to you and that type of thing. I, I used to practice bankruptcy law. And so, you know, as part of what I did as debtors counsel, we would, you know, make deals with uh, creditors to, to the best of our ability and sometimes file bankruptcy and sometimes not. And he was able to to avoid what would appear on face to be a, you know, almost certain bankruptcy filing. It looked like there was no way out of it. And then the, the franchise took off and it just, it, it wasn't even on the table or on the horizon anymore. He was at a completely different level with his company and, and with his life. But do you know the what the the integrity of a man? Don't you respect the man that you know who owe you fifty thousand dollars and make the phone call? I pay you twenty five dollars a week. I know that you have to call me, but you don't have to call me because sure. if I file for bankruptcy, you get nothing. But I committed well, or, to pay. Or, or pennies on the dollar. I mean, it, it, yeah. it varies. But, I, but, I know what you're again, saying, but. <laughs> You know, but but whatever that is, you know, take courage to make the phone call. It, it and courage is a really fundamental um, uh, trait that uh, I think we get into in a later chapter in the book, but it intersects with all the others. And it just, I mean, it's one of the most, probably one of the top five traits that, that we need to have. If, if we don't have it, we're just not going to function well or effectively or be successful in any way. Okay. Um, uh, let's start talking about the... Um the master my group that the the, the people that um, Craig met and uh, it one of them give him um, the some of their golden nuggets. Um, James Amos, he said the uh, the margin between the success and failure very very thin. What what your thought on that? I think that's true. I, it, it's interesting that sometimes we fail at something and that provides us with a knowledge, experience and wisdom that we need to succeed on the next attempt or the attempt after that. Or, the you know, sometimes it takes four or five uh, attempts at a big goal to really be able to achieve it. 
Uh, but but that it yeah, sometimes it's so close it's almost maddening that to fail if if it's that thin where you're just slipping through the ice instead of skating all the way across the lake on the ice, for example. About 10 years ago, one of my mentors gave me the coin, that's a gold coin, and wow. it said success, and on the other side, it's failure. Oh, wow. You know, um, because I, I always thinking it's success and failure, that one is the bottom of the, um, the, the mountain, and the success is on the top. I always see the, the distance uh, between success and, and failure. But then when um, you know, you know, John Amos said that um, the margin is just a thin line, just a, a, a small margin, but and then, you know, and then this one is just say, said it perfectly, it's just a flip of the coin, you know, it's success True. or failure, it's just yeah. a flip of the coin. The three feet from gold, I mean, it could, it could be three, three inches or one inch, you know, I mean, that, that is, you know, football is a game of inches and sometimes, you fail to convert a fourth down conversion by by less than an inch. That that's life. <laughs> and, and you know, sometimes because you quit too soon, you don't know how close you are. That is the um, the problem. You know, it, we, whether a an inch or have an inch, but because you didn't get there, you you don't know how far how how close you are to your destinations. Right. Okay. And uh, so another member of um, the mastermind. Do you want to share that? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember which one John Schwartz was. Yeah. Um, he is the scientist who based everything on the data. Okay. Um, I don't remember what he said. I, you know, I'm remembering what he said the, that... the cowboy ethics guy that's later. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so what, what did uh, John Swartz, he said about knowing, you know, even though people laugh at him, think he's crazy and they don't have any faith and, you know, friends and family, they think that he just should be doing something more practical because he, something is so crazy and they think that he, he will not prove anything. But inside of him, knowing that he is right and that keep his going. So, and again, you're talking about the power of what if and the knowing and believe. When you believe that there's something, you know, there is a, a, a small chance that you believe that you're hoping to turn out okay. But by knowing that is so absolute answer, you know, that's a matter of time you will get there. You will, because he know, he believe, he know his ability and he believe in the process and, and he know. So and, that gets yeah. it by knowing and knowing it, knowing at a deep level, I think. I mean, you you oh, have to yeah. you have you, to you have absolute have certainty, or or it's not really knowing it. Then if if doubt enters into this, then it's Bone not knowing, deep. right? Bone deep knowing. This is okay. So I I, I will um you know I I will uh, let you talk about the um the cowboy ethic because I know you love that. And Tom Hay guy, he said, go for no. Success is a reward for setback. And the, the, the idea is go for no, that is, um, uh, I, I think there's a book out there, it said go for no, that is um, people uh, going to make the phone call and uh, for the sale call or something and it become a game for them. They go for no, they set the goal for no because they keep on the sooner, you know, the more they, you know, if every time they say no, they say thank you, they hang up and they go into what next? And they keep on going because, you know, they know that after all the no, there will be a yes somewhere. And that is how they set their mindset, you know, go for no, because you know that there will be a yes somewhere. And in, in the book, he's talking about, you know, if you go in to see a group of the beautiful 10 or dozen of the women and you want to asking people out and, you know, the handsome guy, the one have no date because he just say, oh, I cannot do that. I cannot take that embarrassment. And but, you know, the not so handsome guy, the ugly guy, he said, I have nothing to lose. He asking one girl after another and get what he the one end up with the beautiful girls. True. We ha we have to be persistent, and I like like you mentioned, it, it, collecting the no's takes us to yes. yes. And, and those some of those no's are going to be painful, especially the first ones. If you're starting out in a business or or as an entrepreneur, I mean that, that's painful to have people you're sure are going to say yes. They say no, or maybe, or or they don't even give you an answer. But but if you can at least collect the no, 
realizing that later that person might be a maybe or maybe a yes or refer you to people that say yes, you know, that then you've actually accomplished something. You know, the, the maybe is a problem. Give me the yes or no. The <laughs> maybe is the, the undecisive, right. you know. The, the, the no that is no for now, maybe yes later. But right. um, okay, let's go to because I know that Chuck and um, the event, uh, I apologize, I cannot say your name, uh, um, you know, to get on um, the, the, the next uh, thing, you know, we can talk about that and we have a question. So, cowboy ethics, Mr. Uh, Murphy. Cowboy ethics, there's a. Um... <laughs> There's a book called Cowboy Ethics, What Wall Street Can Learn from the Code of the West by James Owen. And there's a little poem in here. It deals with courage. And I, I'm going to read the poem briefly. It's not too I love long. That. Yeah. Um, but here's how the poem goes. Um, Live each day with courage. Take pride in your work. Always finish what you start. Do what has to be done. Be tough, but fair. We make a promise. Keep it. Ride for the brand, talk less, say more. Remember that some things aren't for sale and know where to draw the line. And know where to draw the line goes back to the boundaries that we talked about earlier. And, uh, you know, different things jump out at me here. The uh, talk less, say more is a powerful one. I mean, we, we all want to talk a lot, but we don't want to listen to other people. And if we're not listening, we're not absorbing what they're saying, and maybe we should distill our thoughts more and say less and just, you know, say the, the pithy things instead of the things that don't matter as much. Jeremy, I'm very lucky. Um, my father have taught me all of that, you know, in he say in different way, but um, everything that uh, in the cowboy ethic that um, uh, I have learned uh, from my father at an early age, he um, he um, instilled those values in me. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, uh, to me is a, a, a promise, is a promise to keep a promise to deliver. And then you always finish what you started. Because right. many of us, we know, you and I know, and every a lot of people, they can, they everybody can start of some point, but very few finishing it. That's true. I, I, we all want to give up sometimes to throw up the white flag and just throw our arms up in the air. And uh, but but we have to recognize that 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 is temporary and that setbacks turn into comebacks. And if we look at life that way, every time we get knocked down, we have to get back up because there are so many people watching us, depending on us to show that we have the confidence that we can do this. So that they're not giving up with, you know, their challenges. You, you know, uh, Chuck have a comment that I blessed, and I, I um, so I can hope that. But I have to share one thing, um, right? My father said, uh, "You live your life until you take your last breath." Because see, my father always want me to live fully and give it to my all. Always do everything to the best of my ability, mm -hmm. because he believed that you know how you do anything is how you do everything. So um, you, you you know, I mean, if somebody um, that you work with and they show certain patterns and that they show you who they are, so see them as who they are because. They, they tell you who they are. And if you don't believe it, you know, and then later on you have to deal with a headache, shame on you. Because see, somebody tell you about themselves, you better believe them. That's true. So, so right. let's talk about a next uh, episode, and then we will invite our guests to get on the, the square. Okay, the next episode is uh, Fiji and Beyond. Uh, and uh, let's see. And we'll, uh, I'll drop the link for that um, before we close this, um, but we will stick around for questions. But uh, yeah, ep episode nine is uh, Fiji and Beyond based on chapter 11 of the Three Feet from Gold book. Okay, so we, we, we just got close and then we open for um, another session. Okay, thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you.